Welcome back, Zergate fans, to this the 29th, April 2019 anniversary tournament. We are into the winner's finals now. It is going to be North Chilean, North Chilean Gene Mar versus Endgame Boss, Manu 12 versus or Manu 12 and Sparkles. And that is going to be... That's, that's going to be a thing that we have. That would, That's going to be tough. Like, Manu 12 and Sparkles are not easy players to deal with. When we've seen them earlier, they had great macro. It's a great job overall controlling the game. And Northland and Rar have been playing very much a more micro-oriented game. They've been playing a game very much focused on having as much as they can get with as few units as possible, primarily their commander. While on the other hand, with the with Rar and Sparkles, it's like, not so much that. Oops. Darn it. Finals. Anyway. So yeah, it's going to be a much more interesting game that way. As Mana 12 and Sparkles are going to be See, light vehicles, and what else? What is being planned here? Not much. So, yeah, I'm not sure it's going to go. If we go, just while we're waiting for that, let's just double check the tournament results again. Where it looks like throwing the towel bottom has indeed... Oh, I haven't actually won yet. Nothing been decided about this match yet. All right, then. Never mind. I'm trying to get worried that I'm I've lost sync with the game. Somehow. Like is this still No, but I guess it's fine. What the heck happened? No, I must have lost sync. I must have lost sync. Sorry about this. It's just not sure what happened here. But yeah, it seems to have all kind of screwed up. And yeah, this is for those of you wondering. Yes, this is this has been about three hours since we started. Because yeah, it has been three hours since we started. Okay, am I getting desynced or something? Like, this is really weird. Is everyone else taking them all to load? Because Sparkles is doing stuff, but it feels like everyone else isn't loading. Am I still on the internet? Did the world end? Sorry, could someone like say something or anything? I am actually legit starting to get worried. I've like lost all connection to everything. Okay, new spectators are joining up at least. That's something. It's like, I don't understand what's happening. Ah, darn it, it did break. Stupid game. Sorry about this. We've had a lot of technical problems this tournament. I'm not sure what's going on. My frame rate's been, been screwy. The game itself's been messing up. It, everything's just going wrong. And I had to fix the thing with health bars earlier on just to make anything work. So, yeah, not sure what's happening there. I guess I just got disconnected from literally everything all of a sudden. So, unfortunately, this is going to be a bit of a fast start to the game as we're probably going to be getting in on stuff that we had missed. I'm going to guess. Assuming the game even deigns to actually show up in OBS in the first place. Okay, there we go. So, let's see what happened. We have 
Light Vehicles and Tanks coming in from Man of Spells and Sparkles, Northland Gene Rar going for Hovers and Shields. Interesting choices there. Alright, oh, I should probably actually turn the sound back on. Or try, or don't. Anyway, back to the match. And hey, my frame rate's back up! Okay, cool. Wow, that's really smooth. Sorry about that. I just gotten so used to having shitty frame rates that like. Oh my goodness, frame rate's above 20. I forgot what glorious day it is. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Some of the one of the technical issues is no longer a technical problem. Not sure what was going on there. I guess the game decided to be wonky as heck. Okay, cool. Man, that makes me feel a lot better. Wow. Sorry about that, but... Sorry about people watching earlier, but hey, we are into the game proper. Let's actually commentate this game. Oh. No, we're good. Let's commentate the hell out of this game. So, we have... De so... End game boss. I mean... Not someone I'd necessarily want to fight with Hovercraft, but that is clearly what North Shalane Gia decided they're most comfortable going with. Same time, RAR, much more what I would expect, like going heavy on the Outlaws, heavy on the Rogues. But already we have Endgame Boss very rapidly taking the south side of the map. And again, tanks will do that to you, while north side, a little bit less pressure on that. And the Scalpel, Scalpel Dagger will be able to come in here and clean things up at least a touch. So it'll help, but it may not be enough. At the same time, though, that does distract a lot of these blisses at the south. That does leave an opening here, which does allow Ra to break in. Well, North Chilean G does just, re they just retreat back to whatever they have. Don't have to worry about anything. That defense is up. They are good. But still, endgame boss is ahead by 20 metal per second. So if these blisses can be destroyed, and then the reclaim from there can be used, there is a possibility for NCG and Ra to have something to work with. But at the moment, I'm not entirely confident. I feel like there's... A fair bit left that they, I mean, they could do, they could try to do. I kind of doubt that it's actually going to work out super well for them, but I love to see it. As we do have the north side being heavily pressured, actually even more so pressured. Sparkles is having a bit of a tough time actually holding on. Your North Chilean G is making Sparkles kind of regret having gone as naked as they did. These expansions were rather risky. While over to the south, it's not quite the case. I like the dirtbag, though. The dirtbag being used here to try to try to help out, to at least block out, make that a little bit of a harder situation for for the stinger here. But unfortunately, not in the right timing with the right per with the right positioning and with the right follow up. And that seems to be the big problem here. North Chilean G and Rar do not have the units they need to actually get this army to do anything. I mean, the scalpels, okay, sure, that's a lot, but there's not a whole lot when it comes to the other units over to the south. So right now, endgame boss is just winning as far as units, where they need them, when they need them. The blitzes alone are just causing all sorts of problems. And there's not much to deal with. I mean, the scalpels could deal with them, but they're over to the north trying to help break through this giant expansion attempt. Which I can kind of see, actually. This might work out fairly well. Assuming the nanoframes don't get in the way and distract them, which they might... Hard to say. No, no, they aren't. Good. Scalpels are on hold fire. Just point that out. The scalpels are indeed on hold fire. Glad to see that. That does mean it's going to be a little bit easier to manage where or what they're doing. But of course, that requires a lot more attention from North Chilean G, and they're going to be focused quite a bit on both fending off all these blitzes while also making sure they just deal with everything else. And there's the shots for the blitzes. But I feel like this is the point where you need to go to fire at will, and indeed they are. But it may not be enough. These oh, the scalpels are trying their best, but the Ravagers are able to just come in here. Stay true to their name, ravage the entire force of scalpels, and now everything's just wide open. NCG and Rar have basically nothing to work with. I mean, they lost the the opening, they lost a bunch of the map in the process, and trying to crawl back, trying to claw back in this uphill struggle is just not working out for them. I mean, a worthy fight, a worthy attempt. It's just what can they do? And honestly, the only thing I can think of offhand, other than some kind of fax switch for what they currently have would be probably a switch over to sheesh I almost want to say mass bandit actually I quite honestly bandit rogue I feel like is the way to go we do have rogues being built up outlaws as well and I don't totally agree with the outlaws I think the outlaws aren't going to be able to get in range the fences all are in place that will deal with the outlaws so kind of a moot point there 
And other than that, I don't really see any major consideration to anything besides, well, getting some kind of defenses. That's it. That's all that's really being done here. NCG and RAR desperately trying to hold on to what they have, but not really rebuilding. Okay, there's the quill to help rebuild. But other than that, not rebuilding much. Not really able to even hold off all these forces. I mean, as this is happening, as these attacks are going on, endgame bosses just continue to reinforce all these Ravagers, and hardly any of them are going down. A couple of them finally go down thanks to the rogues, but it's not going to be enough. And that's kind of why I want to see Bandit Rogue together, because if you have enough of them, Bandit Rogue is going to be able to do a lot of damage. But then the question is, can it really do that damage when it's not really available to actually... Well, to actually get in and hit, if it's not in range. But it may not matter. Flank coming in here from North, Ch from North Chilean G... Allowing them to hold off the north, too. And actually, if that flank does work out, at the very least, it does open things up a little bit to help contain sparkles. But with the proper flank, if Mana 12's army is destroyed, we could see things switch around a little bit. I mean, it's GNR. They aren't winning on attrition yet, but it's very close. And it depends on how this Blitz fight goes. Blitz is coming in here. The Outlaw is doing what they can to help deal with it. And it's helping out, actually, quite a lot. Allowing the rogues to be able to hit their shots. Forcing, the, forcing them back. Forcing the Blitzes... Basically into nothing, but at the same time, there is an air switch that has been spotted. North Chilean G calling that out to make sure that RAR is able to set up something anti-air related. I feel like RAR is not the best person for this. I mean, Flails are an amazing anti-air unit, and they are being built up. Vandals are not being built up, and nor do I think they should be. Vandals are okay for this purpose, but not great. But anyway, there's Phoenix, though, trying to do its best. Yeah, Vandals, they aren't going to be able to do enough to say, stop a Phoenix or a Raven from destroying something in time. Flails will. So I like the fact that Flails are what's being gone for by North Chilean G. But I'm not really sure how long this is going to hold on. I mean, this is a protracted last stand. Endgame boss is three times the economy. Now, granted, 30 metal per second is not nothing. There's still sort of some room for coming back from it, but it may not be enough. That, however, will be nice use of the Faraday. Unfortunately, you know, it's not going to be enough, but it is at least enough to force some of the Blisses into a bad spot. But still, the damage they take is not enough to kill. But at the cost of two ravens, it might still be worth it. And it's one raven down. Another raven should fall down soon. But even then, it's not even enough. North Chilean G has no faith in this game going anywhere but death for them. And I totally agree. I do think that North Chilean G is kind of on the right track here. Uh, whoops. I think North Chilean G has the right idea. It's just a matter of making sure that they are going to be able to do something in game two. That, to me, is the key thing. They can do something in game two. They have a shot. But that's a bit of a thing. And getting some comments in chat about the way the game works. It's like, okay, so yeah, now that we're kind of in the last bit, someone pointing out that in chat, that they're finding 0K is a big issue that 0K has compared to other spring mods, or spring games, rather, not mods anymore, not since Introverted 95, is that it's difficult to turn the game around. But other games, it can, and I can kind of see that. I mean, I'd have to check Balance Annihilation to be sure, because I don't like really cast Balance Annihilation, so I'm not sure how that works. I mean, the thing with those games, of course, is that they do have Commander Kill, which 0k doesn't have. 0k, like, Commander Death does lead to massive disadvantage, but not kill. So I can kind of see where that'd be a problem. But... I kind of feel like, yeah, it does sort of... But it's also worth noting that North Chilean G and RAR aren't really the favorites to win at all. Like, in the slightest. Based on like, macro, micro, and so forth. And I, I get that. Like, yes, there aren't really a lot of comeback opportunities. I've been in a few games myself where it's like almost losing the first few minutes because I just missed one thing. And what got behind economically, and there's not a way of getting back. And I get that. I'm not sure what way there'd be to actually address that problem. Because I feel like the problem... Maybe maybe what it is is that Skirmishers might have gotten a bit too buffed. Because the way to address that problem in 0k is raiding. Like, 
going around, destroying a bunch of metal extractors, crippling your opponent's economy that way, getting around the back, destroying groups of units, like using riots to actually get rid of units, which means raiders have to be fairly important. But if skirmishers are too strong and are dealing with raiders fairly well, which I think might be happening somewhat, or at least in general are strong, then it's harder for everything to happen because the raiders can't really get through defenses, can't really get through... I mean, skirmishers aren't really a big deal in that case. It's more defenses at that point. But the longer range in general, I feel like that's where 0k might need to address things. Is that it might be a bit too hard to get rid of masses of skirmishers. That, to me, if there's one thing that tends to steamroll the game, it is masses of skirmishers. I don't know how that'd be done, though, because skirmishers are kind of designed to get rid of riot units, and riot units are the units designed to get rid of large clumps. So I'm not sure how it best to be done. I just feel like if you want to have comebacks in 0k, you have to be able to do something about skirmishers... Or about large, not skirmishers, just large groups, which largely are skirmishers. Such that, even if the opponent's behind, they could, with the right use of units, manage to destroy the armies coming in, reclaim back, get around the side, raid a bit, and then go. Maybe even just weakening static defenses a little bit. I don't know. Not Maybe that's my own bias. I'm not a huge fan of static defenses, period. I get them. I just don't tend to use them very often. I don't, otherwise, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is the fact that you just can't really push past a bunch of skirmishers once they're set up. Like, but then, as far as I know, Balance Annihilation has skirmishers as well. Or not skirmishers, not called that because of the way Balance Annihilation works, but as far as I know, they do that as well. It's not unique in any way to... What the heck? It's not in any way unique to what's going on there. Like, it's entirely a question of whether or not this is... Well, it's entirely a question of what's going to happen with the game if you did that. Because I feel like defenses are a big reason why the game can even continue into the mid-game half the time. So I'd say, like, the biggest problem is just that it's hard to get rid of large clumps of units. That, to me, is the key issue in the game. Like, if you get rid of clumps of units, I could see... Sure, maybe. I could see that helping. Also, Throne on Tile Bottom actually getting getting knocked out. Which means we could still have endgame boss against... Gregory Buzzy Beetle. Yes, that is what they're apparently translates to, so yeah, gonna call him Gregory Buzzy Beetle. So that matchup could still work. Okay, Wesley in the channel, in this chat, pointing out that while scrims end the game, Raiders win the game. And I mean that's kind of my point. Is that okay, it's more counter raiding or raiding as a way of dealing with being attacked. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, like, I get where Fortnite Professional is coming from when they're, the criticism is about the way that 0k games tend to snowball and comebacks are difficult. But I'm not sure how to really address that. Because there's... I feel like a lot of stuff that could be done to do that isn't done. Like, I feel like if someone has 20 metal per second or less, no, they're hoops. Like, there's no way. That's not happening. So that I'd agree with. You're gonna say, yeah, 20 metal or less, what are they supposed to do? I don't know. 30 metal or more, though, they can get Striders. They can get a Dante or a Scorpion. They can use that as a way of helping deal with larger groups. I mean, it's a bit risky, and you kind of have to push in advance, but I mean, 0k is kind of a game of reads. I mean, a lot of it is economy, and maybe a bit too much of it's economy. Oh, what the heck? Okay, this... Maybe too much of it's economy. That might be what it is. I don't know. Or it could be maps. I mean, Wes pointing out maps is an issue. 
And Fortnite professional pointing out the balance annihilation has tech levels. Well, that's kind of my point. I mean, 0k doesn't have tech levels, strictly speaking. But 0k does have striders. Oh, for crying out loud, I'm going to have to quit the entire game again. Really annoying. Anyway, Zero K has striders. They have ways of, like, there is a way of turning the game around in the late game with tech, as it were. And that is more or less what I'm suggesting, because when it comes to units that can deal with large groups, well, that's that's something that is the case here. Like, that is a thing. You can, you can go to Striders, you can build up Striders, you can use those as a way of pushing against Skirmishers, all large units, and not a lot of players do. I think, to me, what happens a lot of the time is that players kind of feel locked into what they have, which I can kind of understand, especially under pressure, but it's one of those things where it's almost like you have to almost realize you're going to be locked in and then deal with that in advance. Which is still, it kind of sounds silly, but yeah, like I said, 0k is a lot of prediction. There is a lot of prediction involved in this game. You have to really know what your opponents are likely to go for and then deal with it. Which means that the better players are often going to win simply because they have a much better idea of what their opponents are going to do before their opponents do. Which can be a bit of an issue. I'm not going to lie, like that, that's the thing. It's like, why is this game constantly crashing on me? Like, I keep having to rejoin. Sorry, just side note. I keep trying to rejoin the game or restart the entire game because for whatever reason, I don't know why, the game literally will not start. Like, it gets in and then it just stops. Pauses completely. I have no idea what's going on. I'm really sorry, but this is just technical difficulty after technical difficulty. I don't know how to deal with all this stuff. Right, it's what, what even is game two? What what map are we even on? Run Ravage, right? If I can actually get into the game, like I have literally no idea what's happening. Like what's happening is I load in the game, and sometimes it starts up, and then it seems to work, and then everything just stops. Like the game just suddenly stopped. Like it got an end signal, and then if I try to rejoin, it will literally not let me. Uh, it'll just flicker on the main screen. And I haven't the faintest clue why! Okay, I wish we were probably making a good point about how Striders aren't really that strong these days. Mm. Damn it, game, just work! Why is it so hard to work? Anyway, back to chat stuff. Eco is a bit less... Well, Eco's kind of less powerful, but I don't know. People are also aren't really building up a whole lot in the way of overdrive. That would probably help. Probably. Not 100% sure. Okay, good. Finally, we're in the match. Holy crap, that was absolutely painful. All right, so Shield and Chloe coming in for Man of Spell with Sparkles and All right, we got Spider and Jump Pod. I wasn't sure if it was me. Sorry. I... All right, we're in. And not a whole lot has happened actually in the first couple minutes of the game, surprisingly enough. A lot of expansion going on and I need to get the sound. A lot of expansion going on. 
a lot of expansion doing a fair bit of damage, and Pyro's trying their best. Actually, I managed to get rid of a few wind generators. Still, though, that doesn't really do a whole lot of damage, all things considered. Well, at the same time, and I come over to south, not really that much either. So, starting out already, we have the endgame boss just doing quite a lot, really, to help get rid of what's set up here. NCG and RAR, I mean, they're certainly trying. Pushing hard, doing what they can, but I'm not entirely convinced they have a good start. I mean, they've gotten the southeast, gotten the center, but they've gotten both of those things way slower than endgame boss. And that's where things are coming in. And again, people are talking about in the chat, like, how, you know, economy is not so powerful. It's like, no. Economy is actually really powerful in 0k. It's just really powerful on a nice edge. If your opponent has a 5 metal per second advantage over you for a few minutes, that is still, like, 2 or 3... Oh, not 2 times your army. That's still, like, you know, a 20% boost of the army. That can still be huge. Especially when you're dealing with Lanchester Square Law and how that ends up becoming, like, a 40% boost or 40-50% boost of fighting capability. And that really adds up. That being said, North Chilean G and RAR are doing a great job of holding on in terms of attrition. So while I do think it's going to be a bit tricky uphill battle as far as economy goes, it's not going so bad so far. But of course then the problem is the shield ball coming in here, which that is also going to be a bit of an issue. But, okay, I can't deal with the chat right now. Wesley, thank you for addressing chat. That is very helpful, because I cannot talk to chat right now, even though it's very good questions about Zero K's game design. That is not the game being played right now. The game being played right now is, in fact, a game with a shield ball, like most games recently. Like, I think the next patch is going to be changing the shield ball quite a bit, because there's clearly a lot of issues there. I mean, the amount of damage that felons have been able to do, and just generally the amount of power they've had, has been kind of ridiculous. If the commander tries to bury itself to safety, hoping for the best, like, maybe. Well, it got out of- it survived, at least. Opening things up for the recluses to come in. And then Jack coming in on top of that, trying to help get rid of the commander over here, but I don't see it doing the job very well. I mean, that's... Dead Jack trying his best, but not surviving. So yeah, considering that, there's not a whole lot here. I mean... 30 metal per second to 50 metal per second. It's 20 metal per second lead in favor of endgame boss and has been for most of this game. The attrition is caught up. I mean, there's not a whole lot to easily deal with shields. Again, they're not for spiders. Not even for jump, really. I guess moderators would do a really good job, though. Not against the groups, but against single enemies. It would help. I wonder if the shields themselves are too strong. I mean, I guess that's kind of the point, but I feel like the, just the numbers might just be too high. Because the question is, how do you break through shields with when you don't have status damage? And even with status damage, it's not that... I guess it helps, but even then it has its limits. Hmm. Be a thought. Anyway, with the... That, though, skirmishers are not rogue. Snitch is trying to come in here, which actually aren't really doing all that much. Look at the metal. The snitches are being quite effectively spotted in advance and destroyed, and the recklesses are doing their job properly. Are there more snitches on the way? No, no snitches are on the pipe right now. Although we are getting into blast wings. So probably going to see a lot of stuff here for damage coming in, like getting in, getting rid of all of these things, all these wind generators could be a good use for blast wings but no instead going over to the north should looks like they're going to be used to try to get rid of all these recluses and indeed they don't the recluses again proving that they have a range they have a range advantage they can hit things from far away and not get killed although admittedly that was actually quite impressive they managed to hit the blast wings recluses are not the most uh, they're not the most accurate units out there Still, though, with the Redbacks on hand and the Venom, or the Felon kind of down, it's actually... That Shield Ball's having a bit of a hard time. And, to be fair, this entire time, North Chilean G and Rar have been getting a really good setup on their attrition, so this isn't actually working too badly. 
I mean, good use of spiders, making use of the cliffs, avoiding like, avoiding obvious paths to the ramps, and at the same time, Reckless is just thinning out the glaives. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of defenses. The Lotus will help, but three glaives even is going to be a bit of a threat to the Lotus. Though soft enough as they are, might be enough, and indeed it is. The glaives are actually forced to retreat, having lost most of their number to very little effect. Getting rid of Radar Tower is not worth half a dozen glaives. So I like that. Well done. Of course, the problem remains, there is still a bit of an issue trying to get rid of the actual force in the main base. But that's what the Jack is for, trying his best, the Revenant doing what it can to help deal with it, but that's may not be enough. The Jack's able to get rid of the Nats reasonably well. Nice dodge getting away from the Revenants, but unfortunately the Nats are still enough to help stun everything out. Jax might be able to go to the Gunship Factory. Oh, this is risky. This is super risky. That Jack will be stunned out, I think, before they get rid of the... No, they got rid of the Gunship Plant. Gunship plant down, gnats are down. Planes are up on top of that though, but still the jacks are in the base. North Chilean G able to do some damage with a unit that I think is actually really good for the comeback game. And a perfect position in Stardust too. It's getting behind that. I think that was a solar plant wreck. Still enough. Avoids getting hit by the Stardust is exactly what needs to happen. And the jacks are able to come in, but at the same time, there's also a counter assault here with an entire shield ball inside of the northwest base. Sorry, inside the northeast base. The Jacks doing what they can, but the Jacks fortunately have gone down while the shield ball has not. This is completely destroying North Shilling G and RAR's entire infrastructure, and this might just be game. Really nice attempt by those Jacks to help break the factories, but it wasn't enough. Did not get rid of the shield ball in time, and really didn't contest the shield ball enough to stop it from getting in. That is it. North Shilling G is calling it. Going on to the lower bracket finals, North Shilling G and RAR going up against... Actually, we don't know yet. We will be having the lower bracket pre-finals before that because we haven't actually decided who's in the lower bracket finals yet. But yeah, that is going to be that. So I think... Well, North Lane G's throwing the towel. It looks like Rar is still trying to push something. North Lane G figuring, you know what? Let's just keep going. Let's just try something, anything. What does it matter? Do we have another factory? No, not yet. Are we going to get another factory? Yes, we are getting a gunship plant over in the south or in the center east. I don't expect that's going to be doing a huge amount, but, yeah. But, now that things have calmed down a little bit, just addressing what's being said about fast ones, I like the fact that Zero K is kind of a fast game. I don't like the slow... I don't like the fact that it can slow down to the point... Like, it can be slowed down enough to not have the win happen, but not so much that it doesn't cause a comeback. Like, I think... It should either, you know, a win is a win. Like, if someone's won, they should just win. And if someone hasn't quite won, there should be a pretty reasonable chance to come back. And Zero Kid does feel like, you know, if you've really got an overwhelming advantage, you win. If you have a small advantage, you will eventually win, but it'll take 10 minutes. And that's not great. But, yeah, I mean, we kind of saw before Jax. I don't know, why we're getting game design here? I mean, this is a question for Google Frog. I don't do the main game design in this game. It's more of a question for Google Frog of what to, how to deal with stuff. I mean, army value was quite even, though, but metal use was not. Like I said, the Southwest team just had a massive advantage from the beginning. And it never really got contested. And again, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's kind of hard to contest. I don't know, I don't want to say Raiders should or do a buff, but... Maybe it's just players don't want to use them. Like, it just feels a lot like there's stuff, there's options that exist that are just not considered viable enough to try. Or maybe they aren't viable enough to try. Maybe it's just a very slight thing. I feel like it's a small tweak, like 5 HP here, 10 damage per second there, would probably do the trick to massively shifting things such that the game would actually both end fast and have possible comebacks. That's sort of the issue to me is that like it's got to be something because i mean and yes okay a lot of zero I mean, are saying every zero k player is bad that is that is harsh but it's worth noting that yeah not a lot of zero k players are like super practiced but the problem i think more so is is that the issue because yeah not super practiced but if they're not super practiced either it should end rapidly or it should like 
a good tactical play from a weaker player should still sometimes pull it out. I mean, one or the other. But the way it plays right now, it feels like, you know, some good tactical play from the weaker player happens and the weaker player still loses. They just delay the inevitable rather than actually realistically setting themselves up for a win. That is where things feel a little bit weird. It's like, you know, in theory, if you're pushing that hard, you should have some shot at a victory, but it's like, it's pretty obvious from the economy alone, they don't. So, at that point, why not just have them lose outright quickly, or provide more tools that are more cost-effective? Like, just push past the unit cost stuff so that economy isn't entirely everything. So, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, that is that for the winner's bracket. Until we get to the winner's finals. Or the grand finals. That was the winner's finals. Until we get to the grand finals. So, we're going to be moving on after this to the loses pre-finals. The winner of Lagnestein and Catley with Green Squig. Or I guess we are Groot. Going up against Gregory Buzzy Beetle. Will be up once that's ready. Assuming that it's not going to be an inordinate amount of time to get to that point. Otherwise, I might just decide to watch that match some point in its own right. I don't know. Well, at any rate, be back in a sec, so stay tuned. <laughs> 